Hey guys, this is Srini and you're watching Python tutorial videos on my YouTube channel Python for Microscopists. In the last two tutorials, I covered uh, the topics of uh, grain size distribution analysis using a microscope image that contained a whole bunch of grains, possibly from a uh, alloy, which would be a metallurgical sample, you know, a polished surface, or it can be a geological, a rock, you know, with large grains or even smaller grains, you know, that's polished. And, and the images could be from a light microscope or an electron microscope, it doesn't matter. These are a bunch of grains. Now, this tutorial is uh, a slight extension of the previous couple of tutorials, which means uh, uh, here I'm just going to take exactly the same code that we have written in the last uh, tutorial and uh, import a, uh, uh, a biological sample, uh, which is uh, an image that contains, uh, sorry, import a biological uh, image from a biological sample that contains a whole bunch of cells. And these cells uh, are osteosarcoma cells. So in case you guys uh, wonder, again, I'm pretending to be a life scientist here. I'm a material scientist, but I looked it up beforehand. We, and osteosarcoma is a cancer that is most common type of cancer that starts in the bones. And uh, the reason why we need to know what this is and not just treat image as image, at least I try to do this, is once I know the story about a given image, it makes it a bit more personal. Now I want to make sure, hey, I do my best job to make sure at least I contribute towards uh, uh, accelerating someone's research, which especially if it has immediate effect on someone else's life, right? So we all uh, uh, are motivated uh, uh, from emotional, you know, topics like this. So anyway, uh, getting back to the image, in fact, the image, uh, I opened it in uh, a Zen Light software, which is uh, uh, the software, you know, free software that you can download uh, from Zeiss website called Zeiss. Of course, I work for Call Zeiss. And uh, uh, here is the image that I'm going to use, and this is uh, for the life scientists. You probably know what this, uh, uh, how the image is collected. This is uh, a fluorescence microscopy image, and the sample has been stained with multiple dyes. And in this example, the reason, uh, I mean, the, the dyes that we have at least uh, used in this specific image is AF568488 and DAPI. DAPI is this blue uh, uh, anyway, in this image, it looks in blue color, and uh, uh, it, it, it actually is a good way of uh, separating nuclei. Uh, so let's go back to the image and explain exactly what I mean. If I turn the red and green channels, if you only look at the blue, you see that it's almost like it's already segmented image. Yeah, we just need to just threshold them, segment them, separate them, and then just count them. That's why, uh, that's why uh, in life sciences, you know, it's very important to actually get the sample preparation done right. Then the imaging problem will be very simple to solve. Yeah. So anyway, so this is the image we are going to read in, and uh, of course, I'm going. I converted the image into a TIFF file. So let's go ahead and use TIFF. But if your image is in native CZI format, or if it is in native whatever the microscope company you know format is, then you can use bioformats module. You know, uh, uh, or the, uh, there are various libraries in Python that can actually read uh, these type of proprietary images. For example, uh, CZI file is a library that you can use to read in these files. I mean, uh, I've already installed it, so import C-Z-I-F-I-L-E. So it's going to import that library, as you can see. And then it has functions, you know, that you can use to uh, read the images, you know, and so on. Anyway, that's a different topic. Now, let's look at this code. This is the grain size analysis using watershed code. Uh, this is the code that we have developed in our previous uh, tutorial. So let's take this code and paste it into a temporary file. If you have noticed, I always do everything in the program called firstprogram.py because this is the one we started off with, you know, uh, uh, as part of this tutorial series. But uh, once it looks good, I just do file, save, copy as, and then give it a proper name like grain size analysis or whatever the name is. This is the way I work. You do whatever is comfortable for you. So let's go ahead and edit this code. 
to fit our cell image. So first of all, this file name here is called osteosarcoma.tif. And just to make sure I have typed it correctly, let me run the program until this point and it looks like, uh, no, it's not doing a good job because what I see here is image one, none type, none type object, whatever that thing is. So let's uh, fix this. What's going on here? So osteosarcoma, I think it is underscore zero one dot. I have a couple of images. Yeah, there you go. So this is a uh, uh, unsigned integer eight and uh, 1.1K by one point, almost 4K by three channels, red, green, and blue, and this. So what did we do as the next step? So the last time we converted the image into a gray level image, but I do not want to do that now because if I do that, this entire thing will be a gray level image, which is a shame because our information is contained very nicely in the blue channel. So let's separate the blue channel out. So the way we do that is, as you probably know, we covered this multiple times as part of our NumPy arrays this is nothing but slicing your data set so i want all my x's all my y's and i want only the blue channel the third one here you see x and y or width and height or height and width whatever these two are and this is number of channels and these channels the way they are ordered is blue green and red so by typing zero i'm getting blue okay let's run this and make sure we are fine in fact let's go ahead and visualize this not just run it cv2 dot show uh, what do we want to show? A uh, blue image, let's say, okay? And this is just IMG and CV2 dot weight key zero, okay? So now let's go ahead and run this. And here is the image, very nice. These cells may be a bit difficult to separate, yeah? But most of these are pretty nicely well separated beforehand. Some of these can be a bit challenging, okay? These two, we'll see how we'll do. But that's exactly why we have watershed. If you just use thresholding, this is uh, this sample. You cannot you cannot separate those cells. In fact, the best way to do these type of things is using machine learning, where you teach the algorithm how all these cells look like, and then it actually does a great job separating them. But that's beyond the scope, and I do not have that type of knowledge yet. So uh, let's uh, 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 pixels to microns. This is what is the size of our pi uh, uh, pixel. Luckily, we have full information here. The entire metadata, it should contain that information. 0.454 micron pixel. So let's go back and change this to 454, okay? Pixels to microns. Everything else, let's keep as is a number of iterations for opening. Uh, let's keep it as is opening clear border. This is. This one removes the pixels, uh, not pixels, the cells that are touching the border. So it's not going to include these ones as part of the calculations, okay? So that's what that line actually does, clear border. Sure background, dilate, opening. Well, in this case, let's actually see how the image looks like for the background. By the way, the sure background, uh, are the uh, pixels where we know for sure what the background pixels are. And we are extracting that by dilating the cells, yeah, by dilating the cell area. So we're saying that the pixels close to the cell region, I'm not sure. So let me dilate it a couple of times. Why not dilate it 10 times? Because we have a lot of background. In the previous example, we have very thin grain boundary. So I, I was just very careful, one you know, or two times. Now let's just do it, you know, 10 times and see how the image looks like. Um, that is not the right image because I'm not reporting the right image here. Sure underscore background. So let's go ahead and rerun this. So there you go. So it takes in the cells and I'm dilating it 10 times. Okay. 10 times means 10 pixels, 10 iterations. So all the black area now I know is definitely background because I dilated my uh, cells here. Okay, that's exactly what I'm doing right there. So let's remove this. And now the next task is to find out the pixels corresponding definitely to the foreground. 
For that, we use distance transform. Again, distance transform is nothing but from a given pixel, what is the distance for the closest zero or the closest black pixel? Okay, the center of the cell would have a very high value because the distance is very long from the center to the boundary. The boundary pixels will have a low value. That's why we need to threshold it accordingly in a minute. But let's print out exactly how this image looks like. This is our no, sure foreground image. So I'm taking this distance transform and I am thresholding it to certain value. And that's what I'm assigning to sure uh, foreground. That's pretty much it. Yeah, nothing tricky here. So let us go ahead and run this code. And uh, yeah, so that's for the most part fine. I do not like this. All of these are connected. I want to separate this. And again, erosion is not going to help because then we'll lose some of these very tiny cells, okay? Or tiny dots. Uh, so let us uh, change this to 0 0.5 times the maximum value of distance transform. Previously, the grains were very large, so 0.2, we were okay with that, but now the cells are small, so 0.2 wasn't enough. So let's do 0.5, and let's see, that's okay. We may have a bit overdone it, but that's fine. You know, this one, these two are separated, they're all separated, so I'm going to use these as the seeds for watershed, that's why I want to make sure we get this thing right. Okay, so the next step. Uh, we have sure background, we have sure foreground, and the unknown area is nothing but the definite foreground or background minus the definite foreground, okay? This is the unknown area that we uh, expect the, the uh, watershed to fill. Then we are converting all of that into markers, okay? And uh, then we change the value of markers to uh, 10 from zero because we want to assign zero to the markers of unknown, okay? So we change the values uh, to uh, 10 over there. So we can separate this. It can be 20, doesn't matter. Uh, I just don't want this to be zero. That's the whole point here. Then we have performed watershed on the uh, uh, using the original image and the markers. And we said uh, once, once it does this uh, watershed-based segmentation in OpenCV, all the boundaries, you know, it identified, it actually uh, converts them into, uh, it assigns a value of minus one, okay, to these. So this line is basically, okay, uh, all of those, paint them in yellow onto my original image, okay? So that's what we are trying to do here. And then with region props, uh, we are extracting all the right regions, and I really do not see anything else to change. Maybe you can call this cell number or something, but... Other than that, I'm actually thinking whether anything else requires any change here. I don't see any reason. So let us go ahead with, uh, yeah, let's go ahead and run the entire thing. There you go. This is the segmented. So let's go ahead and hide that. We don't need that. Ooh, this is a great image to look at. So uh, these four regions, it actually did a pretty good job separating them. It did a good job separating these two. That's also pretty nice. Uh, this is not the result you would get if you do traditional thresholding-based segmentation, yeah? And this is pretty nice. That it completely dropped. This it dropped. So maybe by playing with the, uh, what, uh, the distance transform threshold, you know, from 0.5 to 0.4 or something, we can include some of these regions. Uh, or the other way around. Uh, and it removed these two because they are touching the edge. Remember, we have this uh, edge touching line over there. So uh, so anyway, so that is pretty much it. So we took the code that we did in, uh, or we, we have written in our previous tutorial, which means please go ahead and watch that tutorial. It's uh, It should be labeled grain size, grain size analysis using watershed segmentation. And uh, there I've explained every little, uh, every line and uh, convert that into cell segmentation. Uh, and I've also talked about how to load multiple images. That's literally, that should be the video before this one. And uh, when you combine all of these, then you should have a very good program that does cell segmentation on N number of images in a folder containing all of these images. And it should generate a, an Excel file with all the summary of uh, all the data, okay? 
So uh, if you like this video, as usual, please like this video. And if you like these videos I'm creating, you know, the series of these videos, please subscribe to this channel. It keeps me motivated to create more uh, and more of these uh, videos. So uh, thank you very much for your time. And let's cover a different topic the next uh, in our next tutorial. Thank you. And until next time, enjoy life.